Wizards of the Coast is cashing out, and this is going to be huge. Wizards of the Coast is about to make sure that Papa Hasbro gets paid. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel. Big shout out and thank you for everyone giving these videos a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel, helping me get closer to 20,000 subscribers and the party we have when we get there is going to be epic. Now, when I talk about a withdrawal and it seems to be every year, but it's actually more than that, this is not in terms of selling anything. It is selling pieces of reprint equity. We have Commander Masters coming up. And as with every reprint set they've done in recent years, going all the way back to Modern Masters 2013, not all these sets are created equal, but it is a way of Wizards of the Coast managing reprint equity. Now what I mean is, check out a card like this, which is probably going to show up inside Commander Masters, and that is the Ruby Medallion. We're going to probably see the Jet, the Emerald. We'll see the complete set of these probably show up, and that's because the value. They've waited so long to reprint these that the value has hit a certain point where it has risen to a certain level, which they can afford to now cash out. They can afford to take some money out of this particular reprint equity. They said, hey, it's at 35, 38 bucks. We can go ahead, take some out, and there'll still be some left in the bank. And what I mean by that is when they reprint it and the fact it's legal in Commander means this product price will probably drop to around the $25 mark. It'll be sought by a lot of players, which means a lot of boxes are going to get opened. And when you see a lot of boxes opened, that means money for Wizards of the Coast. Remember, they make money off of the boxes, not the secondary market, which they say they don't watch, but we obviously know they do. But that's because they're watching their reprint equity grow. And every year, they got to print something that's big, something that's bold and great, or something that hasn't been printed in a long time. And they manage this by looking at the cards. Now, a lot of us would love to see every single pack be a banger pack, but that'd be blowing their load on one product and they would lose the next year. So they manage it. They put a certain amount of key cards at certain price points. Some will be the big hitters. When you see amazing cards come in, you're like, ah, that's the card I want to get. I'm, I'm hoping to I get crack a mana crypt. I want to see, you know, when we had... Um, the Imperial Seal come back. We are diving in on that stuff, hoping to get it. You're hoping to crack that open. But at the same time, you're also hoping for mid-level cards. You're hoping for cards like this. We're hoping for the Dryad to come back. He's already been at a fairly decent price point for quite a while. Wizards of the Coast reprinting him at this point, which is, you know, a couple of years old. But by reprinting a card like this in Commander Masters, where it does see play, you can see the price would probably only drop to around the $9 mark. They would still have reprint equity in the bank. And here's the most interesting thing about how Wizards does this now. When they reprint products like this, when they put that product out and they give us cards like, like the Dryad here, or they give us the medallions and reprint them, they know that that drains the bank of that equity. But it is draining the bank of the equity of a premium product. It doesn't have the same print run as regular standard boxes. It's not the same product line. So the printings of it are entirely different, which is why not all these products are actually created equal. When you look at products like Ultimate Masters, which is kind of a stale product, nobody's really buying it, but there's still a lot of expensive cards inside that set. Because although those prices dipped and dropped as soon as the set came out and in the intervening years since its release, it's slowly picking up. The prices are ever so slowly creeping back up to that $10, $20, $30 level with multiple cards in that price point where if it keeps rising like that, somebody's going to start buying those boxes again. That's the one thing I can say about reprint boxes because they're all made differently. Some have fetch lands, some don't. Some have a better chance of getting a mana crypt than others depending on how they built the product. And as they manage their equity, they're becoming a lot more savvy in which they do release the product lines and the price point they put because they realize players need to absorb these cards into their decks. They're being really sly about it. Now take a look at this card. Now with a card like Shadow Spear from Theros Beyond Death, a card like this would not normally be up for a reprint, but it does see commander play. There are equipment decks using these types of cards, so it's likely to get a reprint. But would a reprint kill this card this early? No. 
It won't. Theros Beyond Death wasn't opened as much as people think. There was a great time with the collector boxes being cheap and stuff, but the money moves on pretty quick. So a card like this actually has fairly decent reprint value for the company. They can put it into a pack of Commander Masters, and that will soften the blow for players who are critical of the price point if they put enough of these 30, 20, 10, 15, 20 dollar cards, and they know by reprinting it, it will give a nice average value. They will be able to cash in more reprint equity later. This isn't over for them. This card will be able to be reprinted further down the road. And the interesting thing is, if they overprint something, if they kill the IP of it, they say, oh, we've done this card too many times, it's dropped to basically zero, they just make a new card. That's how the company does things. Research and development, R&D, play testing and do things. Not every card works out for them. Not every card ends up like a Shadow Spear. Not every card finds the playability they thought it would. We as players find crazy things that the company misses all the time, but that's not the point. The point is, it's a big circle that keeps going around. And they need to cash this stuff out to keep Papa Hasbro happy. Because if they didn't, if Papa Hasbro wasn't happy, we wouldn't still be making the game. They wouldn't be putting and investing sets and sets ahead to give it to us. So I, I get that point. I still think it's an expensive product, but I get the point. And here's what happens. If they overprint, like we said, and they just kill the product line, the car just goes down to next to nothing. But if you leave it long enough, remember, it's in a premium product only. And when things are in a premium product, they're still not found as often. They're still hard to get. When you look at a cons box and you're going to get six uh, fetch lands a box, as, as little as three, but as much as six, I think some people even got seven. But when you see that many, you're like, wow, like, why isn't that every time? That's when things don't go well. It goes too far to the player side of things. And yes, I know looking back, cons doesn't have any other expensive cards, but the fetch lands are at a high price because Wizards of the Coast is letting that IP equity rest. They're not printing it right now. They're letting it rest. And when they overprint, this is what can happen. Let me show you this one. Here's Tarmogoyf. Now, you guys remember this from Future Sight way back in the day. I mean, this card was probably when I was coming back to Magic. Is this 2007, I think, for Tarmogoyf? I know it's a really old product now, but I look back on this card, and when it came out, I remember I thought nothing of it when I first saw it. It's when I saw some friends using it that I realized how crazy powerful it was. Now, I've circled two boxes here. This is way back in 2013, even though this card's older than that. But it kind of shows that value where it's like, you know, you're talking a few bucks. Okay, it's moving up. Finally reached the $100 level. Became a super popular card. Reached all the way up to like that 200 plus level. And Wizards of the Coast cashed in the reprint equity. And that's why I put the cards here on the side. The Modern Masters, Modern Masters 2050. Because they kept reprinting it. And they wanted to make it an affordable card. So they brought it down, brought it down, brought it down. And they're cashing in equity every time. And this card, the original OG version, is still going to hold a $30 value. Now, it's strange because you can see copies there are as cheap as 12 bucks if you're looking at Time Spiral Remastered. And then $13. But if Wizards of the Coast, which now they haven't printed it for a little while, if they let this card sit and they don't make anything better or more compatible, it will recover because it'll only be found in premium products. Although I'm not fond of reprints because I know they're always coming back around again, I have to appreciate this symphony of how the company puts it all together and makes it all work. They've got to make a certain price point to develop new cards. That's the price we pay, the penance we pay for enjoying the game. But at the same time, when they make a mistake and overkill a card, and they just do it too much, they just let it sit. They're like, okay, it's either going to be a worthless card we never care about, or we'll let it sit for five years and see if the price actually recovers over time. Some cards they don't really want to improve upon, remember. When you look at cards like fetch lands and stuff, they're just giving them a break. I actually don't think we're going to see them in the next year or two. I'm starting to believe they're just going to let that rest, because then it'll be a big hit. Remember, when Modern Horizons 2 came out, this was a smash hit. Multiple fetch lands, it was crazy. Even in Zendikar Rising, opening those box toppers and getting a fetch line was a big deal. I guess it crashed the prices and things went down to zero. But you've all noticed by now, it's all starting to recover. And that's by design. It's what the company planned. They knew they'd be taking a big hit by making a popular product that everyone wanted. But by printing it that much, they realized maybe we gave a little too much. Remember, you could also get things like we get Ragavan stuff in there. We got crazy stuff in that product. Those boxes were amazing. And it just had to sit now. They realized what they did. They kind of overdid it. Now we'll let it sit. We see what happens. They can create new product lines. They can make sure a set's banger or not. But eventually, 
if the card isn't replaced by something better because they overkilled it, it will recover. And then next year, the year after, or the year after that, they can cash in some of that reprint equity. Some sets will be more loaded than others. If they feel the players are, are waxing or waning on a product, they can decide to load up like they did for Ultimate Masters. They can put a few extra things in there to really get the, get the blood pumping. Most people are happy if they see a Mana Crypt. But imagine in this set, if you got a Mana Crypt, followed by a Jeweled Lotus, followed by, I don't know, Cabal Coffers or something else that's pretty cool, getting a multiple or Urborg Tomb of Yagma, something else in there. When you start seeing multiple cards adding up like that, it can get pretty spicy pretty quick. Wizards of the Coast, it's a very intelligent company when it comes to stuff like this. Their designers and team, when they evaluate the value of cards and where the market's at, they know what they're doing. They can say they don't, but we all know they know exactly what they're doing. Now, before we end the video, those, you know, I'm, I know most people are probably left by this point, but for those who are still here, I want you to also take this with you. Think of a standard set. Now, the standard set is an R&D development project they put together. They try new cards, new mechanics, new game stuff. And a few of those cards are going to hit big. A few, they're not. Some, eh, they're just kind of filling cards or reprints added to those sets with different names. But those few cards that hit and do well, those sets that produce those cards just get slotted for reprints and premium products. But they had to do the R&D and research to get them there. So sometimes in these standard sets, we get some crazy cards that are really good and they're more easily found in these types of draft boxes, set booster box, maybe even a collector box, depending on how they did it. Like, like Modern Horizons 2, you can get a real overkill sometimes on how the production of these things are put together. Just more, more in favor of the players. But if they find a big hitting card and they miss something and the card becomes super popular, it will never come back in that standard set. They will bank the reprint equity slot it over here and say, oh, this one came out really good. Players found great ways of using it. We missed a few of them. This card's going to go from like 50 bucks to 80 bucks to 100 bucks, kind of like how Shieldred is right now. Assuming it doesn't get banned, it's going to be a very popular card for a long time. Okay. I know it didn't get in the banning yesterday, but I'm just saying it, it's going to hang in there. So when you look at those cards and look at that value, that's where the R&D comes in. That research and development side where they put these things together but any key cards, you know they're going to end up in a reprint product now. That's why Wizards get so upset. This is why they want to hash. They want to just ugh, dig in there and ugh, take a mouthful of the reserve list. Because they see the value in that equity that they can't touch. They said they'd never touch it. They've tried a few ways of poking holes through it. And it's never gone well. And it probably irritates Papa Hasbro to no end. But they're just, they keep getting slapped every time they try. So they're going to find new ways with these products. I wouldn't be surprised if they start putting more funky card mechanics in there in the next couple of years to give us new cards that we can add directly to reprint equity for a couple of years down the road. They should be expanding this player pool of stuff so they can get more reprint equity out of it down the road. We'll see what they do in the next couple of years. It's fascinating to see this stuff unfold though. I love it because it just, it reminds me of how you would like almost get a bank dividend and you got to cash it out. You want to get some cash out of it. That's what the company does. They're just cashing out part of the IP development that they built. And they know the players want to get their hands on these cards. Great time, man. I mean, I don't always agree with the price points, but I know why they do it and how it helps fuel everything going forward into new card design. So thanks a lot for hanging out, guys. Let me know what you think in that comment section. Slam something down. Don't be afraid. This is where magic conversation comes to live and thrive. We don't have to agree. We just got to be polite about it and have a good time. Thanks a lot for hanging out, and don't forget to bring a friend to Magic. It's a great game after all. And of course, that big shout out thank you that I've got to remember to give each and every video, because this content is brought to you by the patrons of MTG Moxman, by the supporters of this channel, my YouTube membership members, and of course the patrons. You guys rock. Welcome back to the Ramble Jamble at the end. No, my nachos and cheese are not ready, which is why I'm still here. But here's something for you. You made it to the end of the video. You're at the very, very end. The post credit scenes ending. And this is what I find fascinating about this. Getting the leg up here, stretching out. I'm not going to buy Commander Masters at all. I'm just not. I might buy the Commander decks because they look fascinating. But I know there's going to be a good price point on a lot of these cards about 120 days out after printing. Just be patient. But there's a lot of cards even I want to get. I'm building so many Commander decks that I know there's tons of cards I need to get. And this is a great opportunity for those cards to come around. So I understand it. I may not want to spend all that money because I know even if a card gets cut in half, it still seems expensive and it'll get reprinted again. But I do want to play the decks. 
And I guess that's the price I have to pay to be able to enjoy and play these decks I want to build. So I find that kind of like a fair trade in some ways. Like not all the time, but my mind sometimes says, yeah, that's okay. You can work with that. Now, if you made it to this point and you're at the very end, okay. Take a look at Commander Legends Baldur's Gate. Take a look at it. I, I know, but prices are not only holding, some of the cards are starting to get out of stock and are going up in price. Just so you're aware. Just weird. But I would tell you though, because I was surprised myself. Quite a few.